Good morning, geometry scholars. We are moving on to our next section, section three on similar right triangles. A lot of this you're already going to know from the similarity chapter. But there is one thing that, that should be fairly new to you, and it's super important for solving uh, proportions. As you can see, the objectives for us today are to identify similar triangles, to solve real life problems involving similar triangles, and to use geometric means. And the third part, the means, it's so important that we're probably going to break this up into two parts. We'll probably do the similar triangles now before our break, and then we'll probably revisit it afterward because it's that important. And so we're going to go over um, the whole section in this video because as you know, I use the book materials and then more um, review and examples we're going to do in the class notes that are in your class notebook. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start with the book stuff. So when the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, the two smaller triangles are similar to the original triangle and to each other. So you can see this is the altitude CD. And um, there are, when you make that altitude, there's then two smaller triangles plus the bigger one, right? So you have triangle um, <coughs> CBD, this smaller one being similar to ABC. That's the big one. You also have ACD being similar to ABC. And last but not least, the little one and the bigger one are also similar. Remember, similarity means that you have congruent angles, all three corresponding angles, but then you have sides in proportion, all the sides in proportion, as well as the ones about perimeter and area. So here is the similarity theorem. If an altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed are similar to the original triangle and also to each other. There's a proof in your book, example 45, but we'll go over it in class notes as well. Otherwise, you can just take it and run with it like this first example. Identify the similar triangles in the diagram. Solution. Notice that triangle RST is a right triangle and segment TU is the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. So you can use the right triangle similarity theorem which states that if the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed are similar to the original triangle and to each other. First, sketch the three similar right triangles so that the corresponding angles and sides have the same orientation. Then, by the right triangle similarity theorem, triangle TSU is similar to triangle RTU which is similar to triangle RST. That was the only thing I was going to say is I always redraw them. I have a really difficult time turning stuff around in my head, you know, mentally. I know some people have that gift. My twin sister does. I don't have that gift. So I always redraw them on my paper so that I can see the corresponding angles and so that I can see exactly what I'm doing because I'd rather you know, take an extra second on the front end, get it right, then try to figure out, check the answer, get it wrong and figure it out from there. So make this habit, sketch it out. Um, monitoring progress are the problems I put in the class notes. So here's how we're gonna solve a real life problem. A roof has a cross section that is a right triangle. The diagram shows the approximate dimensions of this cross section. Find the height H of the roof. Solution. Step one, understand the problem. You are given the side lengths of a right triangle. You need to find the height of the roof, which is the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. Step two, make a plan. Identify any similar triangles. Then use the similar triangles to write a proportion involving the height and solve for H. Step three, solve the problem. Identify the similar triangles and sketch them. By the right triangle similarity theorem, triangle XYW is similar to triangle YZW, which is similar to triangle XZY. Now use similar triangles to write a proportion involving H. 
Notice that if you tried to write a proportion using triangle XYW and triangle YZW, then there would be two unknowns, so you would not be able to solve for H. So, use triangle XYW and triangle XZY. Because triangle XYW is similar to triangle XZY, you can write a proportion. Corresponding side lengths of similar triangles are proportional. So, you can write the proportion YW divided by ZY equals XY divided by XZ. Substitute H for YW, 5 and 5 tenths for ZY, 3 and 1 tenth for XY, and 6 and 3 tenths for XZ. To solve for H, multiply each side of the equation by 5 and 5 tenths. This gives you H is approximately equal to 2 and 7 tenths. So, the height of the roof is about 2 and 7 tenths meters. Step 4. Look back. Because the height of the roof is a leg of right triangle YZW and right triangle XYW, it should be shorter than each of their hypotenuses. The lengths of the two hypotenuses are YZ equals 5 and 5 tenths, and xy equals 3 and 1 tenth. Because 2 and 7 tenths is less than 3 and 1 tenth, the answer seems reasonable. This is a very good habit. If you want to be correct and self-check and find mistakes, if you had gotten, say you had gotten 27 instead of 2.7, that's a very you know, small error, but it's by a factor of 10. So you would realize that if you got, for H, if you got 27, you'd be like, oh, I did something wrong. But only if you checked. If you're in the habit of checking, you will. Okay? So pointing out the common error, notice that if you try to write a proportion using triangle X, Y, W, and triangle Y, Z, W, just as a reminder, there would be two unknowns. So in every equation, you have to have the same number of unknowns as equations. We only have one equation here, so you can only have one unknown, one thing at a time. Sometimes we have to do two steps. So we're gonna go on then to some, um, to the means. Uh, and the means is something that'll be really useful in a number of subject areas, not just math. So the core concept is, has to do with uh, similarity. The geometric mean of two positive numbers, A and B, is the positive number X that satisfies A over X equals X over B. So X squared equals the product AB, and X is equal to the square root of AB. Now you'll see how this works um, in similar triangles. It's actually very cool. You'll, you're going to love it. All right. But again, if you have a hard time seeing it, then redraw everything until you can see exactly what is similar to what. But I'm going to go ahead and do this just basic example. Here's the definition. Find, Find the, the geometric, geometric mean, mean of 24, 24 and 48. Solution. By the definition of geometric mean, x squared equals a times b, where a and b are positive numbers and x is the geometric mean. Substitute 24 for A and 48 for B. Then take the positive square root of each side of the equation. This gives you X equals the square root of the quantity 24 times 48. Next, factor 48 to get X equals the square root of the quantity 24 times 24 times 2. When you simplify, you get X equals 24 times the square root of 2. So, the geometric mean of 24 and 48 is 24 times the square root of 2, which is approximately equal to 33 and 9 tenths. Okay, so it's a little different than anything you've looked at before, but this is called, again, the geometric mean. So we have two theorems supporting this concept, which we will move on. So this is how you use it. Okay, we're going to start here with our similar triangles are other sketches and you've got the big triangle abc 
If you draw this altitude CD, it's drawn to the hypotenuse forming those two smaller triangles. They are similar. So we know that CBD, the little one, is similar to ACD, the other bigger one, which is also similar to the large original one, ABC. Because the triangles are similar, you can write and simplify the following proportions. And this is how you get your means. So you can write that CD over AD is equal to BD over CD. So the side over the bottom is equal to the side over the bottom. And you can see that easily if it's redrawn right? The side over the bottom is equal to the side over the bottom. Well, then you end up with um, CD multiplying times itself when you do the cross product. CD times CD, so CD squared equals AD times BD. You can see that this is the geometric mean definition. You can write these three with it in all the other ways as well. Second, um, we've got these theorems now. If you understand that concept, and if you don't, stop the video, go back for a second, and re-listen to my explanation, do a couple sketches on your own, and you'll see exactly how it works. Now, the geometric mean altitude theorem says, in a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse. So CD, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse, divides the hypotenuse into two segments. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments of the hypotenuse. So if you'll notice, that's talking about CD and the product there is AD times BD. That is the product of the two segments of the split hypotenuse. AD and DB. So CD squared equals AD times BD. There is an example in your book, number 41, and 42 is also for the second theorem. So that's for the altitude. Then we have another theorem that's for the length. In a right triangle, the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse divides the hypotenuse into two segments. So we again have AD and BD, but the length of each leg of the right triangle is the segment of, oh wait, I'm sorry, I think I misspoke. The length of each leg of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse that, it just, that is adjacent to the leg. So this hypotenuse, a C squared is equal to AD times the bigger one, AB. So again, if you redrew all the sketches, it's really handy. That's going to be a leg of the larger triangle. And we can also write that CB squared, the shorter leg, is equal to DB times AB. So the small one times the big one. So again, these are very different, but they're very handy, useful in all kinds of things. So here's how you use it. Find the value of each variable. Solution, part A. Notice that X is the length of the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Apply the geometric mean altitude theorem. By this theorem, X is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments of the hypotenuse. So, X squared equals six times three. Six times three is 18. So you have the equation, x squared equals 18. To solve for x, take the positive square root of each side of the equation. This gives you x equals the square root of 18. To write your answer in simplest form, you can first write the square root of 18 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. When you simplify, you get x equals 3 times the square root of 2. So, the value of x is 3 times the square root of 2. Part B. Notice that y is the length of a leg of the right triangle. Apply the geometric mean leg theorem. 
By this theorem, y is the geometric mean of the length of the segment of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to this leg and the length of the hypotenuse. So, y squared equals 2 times the quantity 5 plus 2. In part b, the geometric mean leg theorem gives y squared equals 2 times the quantity 5 plus 2, not y squared equals 5 times the quantity 5 plus 2, because the side with length y is adjacent to the segment with length 2. Now, 5 plus 2 is 7, and 2 times 7 is 14. So, you have the equation y squared equals 14. To solve for y, take the positive square root of each side of the equation. This gives you y equals the square root of 14. So, the value of y is the square root of 14. Again, study those examples. We'll do more in our notes. Um, we're also going to do now indirect measurement. And this was the chapter opener when um, the blonde girl made Robert <laughs> climb the, the, uh, the rock wall. And she used that piece of cardboard just to eyeball it. So hopefully you can see that. We're going to do this example now. To find the cost of installing a rock wall in your school gymnasium, you need to find the height of the gym wall. You use a cardboard square to line up the top and bottom of the gym wall. Your friend measures the vertical distance from the ground to your eye and the horizontal distance from you to the gym wall. Approximate the height of the gym wall. Solution. Notice that the distance from you to the gym wall is the length of the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse of the right triangle. By the geometric mean altitude theorem, you know that 8 and 5 tenths is the geometric mean of w and 5. So, 8 and 5 tenths squared equals w times 5. When you square 8 and 5 tenths, you get the equation 72 and 25 hundredths equals 5w. To solve for w, divide each side of the equation by 5. This gives you 14 and 45 hundredths equals w. So, the height of the wall is 5 plus w, which equals 5 plus 14 and 45 hundredths, which equals 19 and 45 hundredths feet. And that is a big part of this chapter. Look at all this stuff you're learning. I believe we are at the end of our yep, exercises. And so you have an assignment in Big Ideas that's 20 problems for you to practice this on your own. Please, please, please use highlighters to do those other little, um, you know, to separate the um, triangles, redraw everything, keep sketch, um, keep your notes near because um, they're very easy to, to mix up because they're all in different um, locations, orientations. So make sure that you take that extra second and, and do your best work possible, scholars. Okay, so I'm going to end this, and I will see you in class.